Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Um, given his background and how he was raised, given um, my background and how I was raised, we've always had to work out how to talk to each other in a way that is, again, honoring his mind mm. whilst honoring my mind. Um, because I, you know, if we've got a conflict that's happening between us, I want to solve it then and there. You know, I need to, because I feel anxious otherwise, right, based on my my attachment history. He doesn't want to. He wants to not talk about it. He needs to calm himself down first. And if the more I want to talk, the more it 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 increases his stress response. So we have had to really navigate how to meet each other's needs. He needs some time, but I need some connection. So how do we navigate that together without setting each other off, if that makes sense? Yeah. So that's probably been our, our ongoing journey, and we've definitely got so much more better at it as time has gone on. Um, I Mind you, we've... We, we rarely get to that point because we communicate so well. Honestly, having children has probably made it harder <laughs> because you, yeah. you add so much more stress in, stresses into the relationship when you have kids. You're sleep deprived. You feel touched out. You feel like your needs aren't getting met in any way because you're just giving to your children. So, you know, it's had to make us level up in the way that we communicate. But you know, that's probably been the biggest journey. I think with LJ, I have always had such a deep belief in him and who he is as a person that life has given us some pretty stressful times, but I've never once questioned him and his purpose or his integrity or I've always supported him and believed in him. And yeah. he is the same for me. So I've, I've, and I've never had a relationship like that with anyone in my life. Yeah. Amazing. It, it, it's, yeah, he seems so composed and the things that he was telling me, and obviously I don't want to give anything away. Um, but the conversation, I mean, we had a conversation for two hours, I think, and he just seemed so composed and the things he was telling me, I'm like, <laughs> That's not you, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, 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 no. I don't believe your word you're saying to me right now. I'm joking because obviously I do. But that, you know, I, so even he would have to cut with the mindset that you have going into this relationship. Of, I feel like his was wouldn't even be the anywhere close to it. He would have to do a lot of work to 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 honor your mind. Um, so has you would have seen this biggest the biggest transformation from the point of getting together to where he is now, right? Like that's just huge. I think, well, he started, I can't take all the credit <laughs> because okay. he yeah, started. Yeah, so maybe I got that wrong. Yeah, so go on, sorry. He, he started his journey before I came into the picture. Oh, ah, okay. Um, where he started to change himself and that, so I met him already he's already on a journey of, of change. Right. Okay. Um, so I, I, yeah, I, um, I think probably what I've done in the relationship is I've created enough safety for him Yeah. to really, really take himself to the next level too. Does that make sense? Like yeah, it does. I, um, you know, the backgrounds he come from is, has a lot of, you know, shame and there's a lot of um, uh, fear-based mm. uh, responses. And I've just always created 
a space of I accept whatever whatever's going on like we we um we I've always approached him with a lot more tenderness I think I think he's he's a he's he has really allowed himself to grow through that and that'll become very clear and people will be able to put those puzzles together when they've listened to this episode and listened to his episode as well yeah. together. It will become very crystal clear. But yeah, I think what you were referring to there is probably his childhood as well. Um, yes. Because that, that scared the living daylights out of me. Um, Did it? Oh, I mean, I think it would anyone, right? I guess. But in that, well, I in guess those... it was normal for, for him. <clears throat> yeah. Normalized. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Anyway. Um, coming towards the end then, let's get back into you. Um, mm-hmm. Let's go, we're probably, we're, well, actually, you. let's put it in your control. What Have we have we missed anything in the jigsaw of your life of after meeting LJ and the, the journey? You've had your children. Uh, mm. You've had one child. But you did say last time that we spoke about going back to work and obviously you're going back into that high risk. So your perspective, your, uh, your perspective mm-hmm. is now changed being a mother. You've got mm. a child. I think, I feel like that was a pivotal part in your career change, right? Yeah. Becoming a mom. So I, how I have viewed becoming a mother is, um, and, and, and again, what you might be picking up about me is I will, I will find meaning in anything. <laughs> so everything means something to me. Um, yeah, but becoming a mother in particular, I, I think our society might have lost some of the uh, uh, spirituality that gets connected into the rites of passage of becoming a mother. And um, when I became a mum for the first time, I've always said my son cracked me open and 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 forced me to heal parts of myself that um, I I kind of knew was there, but I, I I could always just get on with. So becoming a mum the first time it really made me really do a, a really critical analysis of myself and go, is this how is this the human I want to be? for my child to uh, model from and my child to experience and how do I want, I think the biggest thing was how do I want my child to feel in my presence? And um, that really got me, again, thinking a lot more about what felt experience I give off and um, and then having my, you know, losing a baby, going through that grief process um, uh, and then uh, falling pregnant with my daughter and just her birth you know she's my son my husband had COVID at the time and she was a uh she was a vaginal birth after cesarean so um he couldn't be there and he's my safest place right mm-hmm. uh so that was uh probably another that was another traumatic experience for me it was le- I remember leaving him at home and yeah. my body just instantly feeling unsafe yeah, and I then imagine going to the hospital getting driven by my sister-in-law and it was just such a bizarre time um but um my daughter giving me this powerful experience of birthing her without LJ there and her coming and 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 feeling like I did it like I did I'm so I did it like the 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 most powerful feeling um, and then again, she got, she got severe levels of jaundice and had to be taken away to a specialist hospital for treatment. And I couldn't go cause I was at COVID close contact. And, um, so there was a period of separation. And I remember saying to the doctor who was taking her away, I said, you do understand I'm an attachment focused psychologist. What you're doing for me is probably the worst thing you can do. And, um, you know, she was as empathetic as she could be. Um, but couldn't change the circumstances so it was about a day and a half of of luckily it was only that long of not being with her and um then I was up just with her me and her in the hospital for eight days together um again without LJ LJ it took him eight days well we got sent home for after four days so he it wasn't till four days that he met his daughter and then we were back in hospital 12 hours after that because her jaundice levels increased again. So another four days and 
it was like his capacity is ridiculous it's in what he can what he can cope with um and it but it also forced me to go through some pretty hard things without him and I think I needed to learn that as well that he'd created so much safety for me um but then I just birthed my daughter and is now in an a special care unit with her for eight days on my own, not able to go home because I can't get COVID, I can't leave, and because yeah. um, then I won't be able to see her. So it forced me to really tap into my own inner resources and strength. And again, gratitude was a big, a big player for me that helped keep me connected in and focused on on um, getting through that time and. Um, yeah, that I just find that each, I don't know what this child's going to bring me, but each child seems to bring me another deeper lesson. In your um, career basis, uh, career point of view, when, which was it after your first child or after your second child where you were not willing to go back to the high risk? It was after my second. After so, your second. With my first, I, I, I don't know if it was just a, a capacity perspective, but I could still hold I could still hold in mind the needs of my child with the neat complex needs of, of particularly high risk clients. Yeah. But then when my second came along, I now had two children. <laughs> and I guess everyone everyone is able to tolerate this differently. But for me, I just realized I, and you know, I've been, I've been co-sleeping with her and, you know, we were exclusively breastfeeding for a long time. Um, so my, uh, she just drew me into this very immersive way of parenting where with my son, he, we didn't breastfeed for long. And, you know, I, there was a little bit more separation really. I, I guess I, there was a bit more capacity I had for, uh, uh for, for my work. Um, but with my daughter, there was a, it was very clear to me, I can't take on the same clients I was taking on before. I just didn't have the capacity to give them what they needed, plus my children what they needed. Yeah. So um, I, had, I became very boundaried with uh, what work I was taking on. And um, it was around that time where I was also then formulating this idea of, I I want to go bigger. I want to have greater impact, but do it in a way that is is more sustainable for me too as now a mum. So how can I work with people and have a greater ripple effect um, where it doesn't just involve intensive one-on-one therapy work does that make sense it does yeah, yeah. what year was on him honoring did it go straight into honoring minds or was there anything else before it no there was nothing really else i ended up we i joined a um a group of other other um psychologists and mental health professionals who also had their own ideas of how they wanted to have a different impact whilst knowing we that you know the whilst using the skills that we have, but using them in a different way. So I joined a, a group um, with a particular uh, a clinical psychologist who was running kind of like a coaching group for, mental, for professionals who wanted to know how to expand into uh, a coaching role. And it was about a year or nine months of just figuring out what is, what is my purpose? What am I trying to achieve? What, um, doing some research um, talking to uh, lawyers around um, how to maintain my registration, but um, also move yeah, into the yeah. coaching world. And so it was a lot of groundwork first. Yeah. Um, and then this year was the year of launching Honoring Minds. Um, and then I've also fallen pregnant this year. So <laughs> <laughs> um, holding Just both spaces. Um, so like hard for yourself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> bit of an overachiever perhaps Andy um but next year we'll, we'll I think I'll I'll give myself grace for the end of the year 
and the start of next year and then next year I want to move more into honoring minds well yeah I think that's smart um honoring minds I think I feel like you've already answered it uh but what why honoring minds what why were those the two powerful words that you chose for the business I don't think I realized the impact of that name until this conversation, if I'm completely honest, oh. because as I have reflected on the, the journey that I've had, I've really recognized that it's been a life. It's been a journey for me of learning how to, how to hold my mind and other people's minds together mm. and, and know how to do that well. Um, so I guess I would always think about it in terms of the therapy room and, and how that how important it is for other people to feel like their mind is being honoured. So we want yeah. as humans, you know, we we want to feel understood and heard and seen and validated. So that's where it initially came from. But talking to you, I think it's really made me recognise that it came from something deeper than that. It's given me a perspective. I'm going to be definitely using that terminology, honouring minds, a lot more going forward when I talk to the children and even when I advise some of the people that I talk to, um, like some of the prins, some of the prins that I talk to, we, we talk about. I'm actually helping a prin right now with his sleep, believe it or not. Um, well, I'd like to think I'm helping him anyway, you know, but we discuss it at a deep level. But I'm going to be starting using that terminology, honouring minds. I think that's quite I think that's powerful and you're giving me a new perspective on that. So I appreciate that. No, I'm definitely going to use it. Um, okay, three final questions then. I have to try and remember what my three final questions are. I've got, I've got a million things going through my brain. Um, the, is there anything that you think if we were going to – is there anything that you think we might have missed from our conversation that you think is worth sharing? before we end it. We might have covered everything. I just always um, get try and do that question to trigger the thought. If there's anything that we have missed that you think is important, what would it be? Um, I, I don't, I, nothing's coming to my mind right now. So yeah. no, I, have to honor that. I have to honor yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Honoring <laughs> mind. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. Cool. I like it. Well, in the space of leadership, in the space of psychology, in the space of the, the topics that we've covered, if you were going to, if somebody was sitting here watching it, taking it on and shared experience that you and I have been through, whether it's workplace bullying or having that perspective of wanting to change and impact at a bigger level, um, what piece of advice would you give that person who's in that, I suppose, that messy middle? Can you say that again? Sorry. So like, so anyone, so the topics that we've covered is obviously the, the mind and, and leadership and bullying and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. If somebody was watching this and, and is going through something very similar um, and, and is in the journey that we were at maybe a few years ago, what would be just a one piece of simple advice you, you would mm. give them, do you think? Search for safety whether if you cannot find that safety within someone in the organization then it's about trying to find it within yourself mm. so if it means that you start the day in a way that allows your body to feel safe and it builds up this bodily experience of i'm okay this is hard i can handle this and I can retreat back to this feeling at any time, then that's how you start your day to oh. allow yourself to then go into the war zone and then come back. So I, I, that's what I would say. And there's so many ways you can help your nervous system feel safe. I wished I knew what I know now, 10 years ago, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, that would have been good to have that piece of advice then. Um, but at the same time, not because I wouldn't be doing this probably if it wasn't for yeah. that experience. So and that's the way I look at it. All right, final question. Um, the one I end on with everybody, and I think I did prep you for this one. I don't even remember. Purpose. <laughs> the title, in my book, I use the word purpose, uh, how mm -hmm. to lead with purpose. But um, what is your purpose in life? My purpose is to remind all of us that we are here to connect, 
that we are a connection focused species, that we need connection to survive. It's how we've survived. And that we have this profound ability to connect with people and turn their light on inside. Leaders have this influential ability to either turn people's lights on or turn them off. And if you turn someone's light on, then they go home and they then turn the lights on of their family members and they turn the lights on of their culture and their society. And then there's this ripple effect that goes out of how powerful connection is. So that's what my purpose is, to remind everyone how powerful connection is. And it has this yeah. ripple effect that goes out that you really can't measure. Well, that's it comes back to what Simon, again, Simon Sinek talks about the, the playing the infinite, having the infinite mindset, right? Yeah, I hadn't linked that before. Yeah. Yeah, it's that infinite mindset. It really is. If it, I always say if it is about you as a leader, if you are egotistical and you do want to look good, you still you look good this way anyway. Still. Do you know what I mean? Well, you feel good that way. You feel yeah, good. 100%, you feel yeah. better for people. Uh, absolutely. I'm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I completely agree with you. But, you know, the, anyway. We could be here all day <laughs> talking about that. Uh, thank you, Sherelle. That was, um, I, I've absolutely really enjoyed the conversation. I, I feel we could probably do another part two uh, and connect nurturing leadership and honoring minds and leading our yeah. own way all together uh, quite easily. Um, so I, I appreciate our um, our journey together and I, I feel like we've uh, bonded and we, you've stuck with me as a friend now forever. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so thank you for joining me on Leading Our Own Way. I really appreciate it. You've been absolutely incredible. And uh, I wish you all the best for the, you know, obviously having the, your third third baby. I was going to say third and final baby, but with uh, the, tra the tribe mentality of where LJ comes from, who knows? <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you, Andy. It's been my pleasure. It's been my, my honor. I've really enjoyed connecting with you. Thank you. And um, we, we look forward to uh, meeting your husband next week with uh, LJ. It's going to be one exciting episode again. Yeah, so. yeah. It'd be great. Yeah, it will be. But thank you. Um, I've learned a lot and um, I'll be able to take it with me going forward. And I'm sure uh, everybody who's watching this will as well. So thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Andy. For everybody else who's tuning in, uh, welcome LJ next week. Um, please, please come back for that one. It's going to be incredible and uh, you'll be able to connect the dots with what we've been saying today. Um, until then, have a great week and uh, speak to you soon. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way. And we'll get you on next week's episode.